Praise the Lord. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson welcoming you to another dynamic broadcast of Jesus is the answer. Let's give the winds a mighty blow. Jesus saves. Jesus heals. Jesus is coming back again. And the scripture says, and I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Welcome to the Jesus is the answer broadcast. I'm Bishop Ernest Johnson. I want to welcome you to this powerful, powerful broadcast today. And we're going to talk about today the spirit of Jezebel. Exactly what it is. Is the spirit of Jezebel just women or can it be men? Amen. And so we want to talk about that today because it is the spirit that uh, is is, uh, dominating and tearing down homes and dividing homes and dividing families. And God, amen, will make a way. God uh, is exposing this spirit that's happening today. Amen. And so it's happening uh, in America. And so America is being divided. Amen. And so there's a there's a battle of the sexes. There's a battle of the star, the stars, the sexes. Amen. The battle of the families. Families are being torn apart because people are fighting for position. People are fighting for authority. So we want to talk about that today. Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this word today. We ask you to move under the unction and the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, God. Give us wisdom. Give us knowledge. Give us understanding, O God. And God, we say thank you. We praise you right now, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. We're going to talk about the spirit of Jezebel right after this important message. Stay tuned. If you have been blessed by the ministry of Jitter TV and Bishop Johnson, we would love to hear from you. For prayer requests and donations, please visit us online at www.jittertv.org or call our prayer counsellors who are standing by to take your prayer request and donations 24-7 at 310-637-7086. Thanks in advance for your prayers and financial support as we continue to change lives around the world through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Welcome back to the broadcast of Jesus is the Answer. Today, we're going to get right into the word because we're coming right into a battle. Amen. The Bible says when the, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. And so I began to ask the Lord, what does it mean, the spirit of of the Lord will lift up a standard. So what is the standard? And I thought about as a child, when you break a rule, the teacher makes you write standards. She makes you write something over and over and over and over again. And so what the Lord was saying that when the enemy's coming in like a flood, we have to really put the word up there. We have to confess the word. We have to quote the word. Amen. We have to constantly fight this onslaught of flood this flood, when the enemy's coming in like a flood, we have to fight it with an onslaught of the word of God. That's all we have to fight with. Amen. We don't have no witchcraft oils. We don't have all that other stuff. All we have is the word of God. Amen. And so we have to take the word and we have to quote the word. We have to speak the word. We have to pray the word. Amen. And even though we've been saved for many years, we have to continue to read the word. We have to continue to study the word. We have to continue to preach the word. Amen. Uh, In the midst of everything that is going on, we have to lift up the name of the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God. John 1, 1. And the word became flesh in John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. All we have It's to battle Satan is the word of God. Amen. And so when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Bible says the spirit of the Lord. So what is the spirit of the Lord going to do? He's going to take up the take up the word of God and lift up a standard. Amen. Against the enemy, against this onslaught of attacks. So God is getting ready to lift up a standard against all the enemies that are coming against you. Amen. The financial enemies, the, the, the marital in, in enemies, the, the anger enemies, the issues that so easy beset you. Amen. The Bible says, let us lay aside the weight and the sin 
that does so easy beset us and let us run this race with patience. Amen. So we got to lay aside the sin. We got to lay aside these little things. And uh, some things are not sin. Amen. Everything is not sin that people call sin. But some things are weights. They weigh us down. Amen. Paul said, all things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. What does that mean? Amen. It's okay. It's no law against certain things. There's no law going to roller skate. There's no law. Amen. Some of y'all dress certain kind of ways. There's no law against it. But Paul said it's not expedient. And expedient means it's not smart. Amen. Even though you have the uh, they uh, uh, legalized marijuana, it's not smart to smoke it. Even though they legalize alcohol, it's not smart to get drunk with it. Why? Because it leads to a DUI, even being high. If they pull you over and you're a certain high, you get a DUI now. Now, ain't that crazy? They passed the law saying that you can do recreational drugs, but now they have a law saying if you do too much, you're going to jail. Amen. And this is really, really crazy. So just because they have passed a law to say you can do these things, just because they passed the law for same sex marriage. Amen. The law of God supersedes the law of man because Jesus Christ is the authority on life. The Bible says that Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. That means he begins the thought and he ends the thought. Amen. And so what God says, the scripture says, let God be true and every man a liar. So the only way we're going to stand against this onslaught of attacks is by the word of God. Amen. So the spirit of Jezebel is a spirit of manipulation. Amen. And so the first spirit of Jezebel that we were to see in the Bible is in first Kings. But let me tell you something. There was a glimpse of of a Jezebel spirit in the book of Genesis. And you know what that was? When the devil was talking to Eve, the Bible says that after Eve took the fruit and bit of it, she handed it to her husband. So her husband was sitting right there while Satan was talking to this woman. And her husband didn't say nothing. He sat there quiet. You know, and so many people, I, I, I listen to them. I listen to some interviews and they say, how is it that you have survived your marriage for 90 years? How is it y'all have had an 80, 50, 60, 70, 90 year marriage? And he said, just let her be right. <laughs> just let her be right. Amen. Well, sometimes when we do that, when we let her be right, men are being just demasculated. Amen. The authority has been stripped of them and then they can't function. They can't get ahead. They can't move ahead. There's so many odds against men today. Amen. And that spirit of Jezebel is something else. So let's talk about the spirit of Jezebel. Amen. So remember, the spirit of Jezebel is not the first woman that rose up and controlled her husband. Eve controlled Adam because Adam, he knew better, but he gave it up because of Eve, because he did not want to be alone. The scripture says it's not good that man should be alone. So when he gave Eve to Adam, Amen. Eve was for Adam, not Adam for Eve. But Eve rose up and took leadership in the situation and brought a curse and brought the curse of death on all mankind. So we all have to suffer the spirit of death from all mankind. Oh, can I get a witness in the house? Because of their sin. Because of Adam's sin, all men, death is passed unto all men. So that's why Jesus had to come and redeem us from the curse of the law. And redeem us from death, hell, and the grave. Amen. And the Bible says in the book of Revelation, the last enemy that shall be defeated is death. Death is our enemy. Amen. I said death is our enemy. Amen. Can I get a witness? So here in 1 Kings, amen, we're going to go to uh, chapter uh, 19. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 19, now just to set the backstory, in 1 Kings chapter 19, he's talking about Elijah the prophet, and Elijah the prophet had went up on the mountain, and he challenged the prophets of Baal, he challenged the prophets of Jezebel, the priests of Jezebel, and he challenged them, and he said, let the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And so he was, Elijah was so confident in the power 
and the authority of the God that he served, the God of Abraham, the Isaac, and Jacob, he said, y'all go ahead. Y'all go ahead and, and call on your God and see what happens. So these people began to call on their foreign gods, and they been begin to cry out, and there was no response. So then they started cutting themselves. Amen. When they got no response, they started cutting themselves. And, and so, so then uh, Elijah kind of mocked them. And he said, well, you know, maybe your God is on vacation. Maybe he's asleep somewhere. He's not answering. So after he did all that, Elijah prepared an altar. The Bible says he dug a, a ditch of the dirt. He dug a ditch and he built up the rocks and he put the wood on there and he put the sacrifice and he lit the fire and put the sacrifice on there. And so the Bible says that when he offered the sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, he offered a certain sacrifice to God. Amen. That God, by fire, the fire came down from heaven and it sucked up the altar. It took the rocks, it took the wood, it took the animal, and it licked up the water because there was water in the, the dirt, in the ditch, there was a, a, a pit dug around the altar and it dried up all the water. Amen. So God accepted that sacrifice. And so then the Bible says that, that, uh, that uh, Elijah and the men that were with him killed all the false prophets of Baal. He killed all those false prophets. Amen. So I don't care what these religions and the signs and wonders that they're presenting, there is no God like unto our God, and his name is Jesus. And so all these false gods are going to be burnt up. Amen. They're deceiving many. The Bible says many false Christs have gone into the world, and they're deceiving many. Amen. But there's no other God like Jesus. There is no other God but Jesus. Amen. He's not just another prophet. He's God incarnate. He's God manifested in the flesh. You say, how do you know that, Bishop Johnson? Amen. Is it because you're apostolic? No, it's because I study the word. Amen. I didn't even know anything about apostolic when I got the revelation that Jesus was God manifested in the flesh. You know why? Because I was reading it. I was studying it. Oh, can I get a witness in the house? And yet, did they teach it in Bible class? Yes, they taught it in Sunday school. They taught it in Bible class. And, and, and then 1 Timothy, I think it's 1 Timothy chapter 3, it says, Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested, amen, in the world, amen, preached of the gospel in the world, believed on in the world, amen, and, and uh, received up into glory. And it says, great is the mystery of godliness. Amen. It didn't say Jesus. It said God was manifested in the world. Well, who was manifested in the world? Jesus. Oh, glory to God. So look what it says here in 1 Kings chapter 19. And so anyway, Elijah killed all the false prophets. And the Bible says in verse 46, I'm going to read 18 and 46. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. And Jezebel sent the messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw it, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, that belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. So when Elijah got this threat from Jezebel, she said, As you killed all my prophets, all her false prophets, she said, as you kill them tomorrow, about this time, I'm going to have you. And so what did the Bible say? He ran. He ran in fear. Amen. You know, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. But nevertheless, when I read the scriptures, the Bible says when they wanted to kill Jesus, that Jesus snuck through the crowd and went to another city because his time was not yet come. Amen. So sometimes when you get threats and stuff like that, you just have to, you got to pay attention to that stuff. Amen. Because you don't know what's going on. But see, Jesus snuck through the crowd and went to another city because he said, my time is not yet come. I still have work to do. Amen. So pay attention to what's going on around you because you still have work to do. Amen. Stay out of these situations. Be careful who you bring in your house. Be, don't be picking up people in your car. Amen. Tell me, I'm trying to be a nice Christian. Amen. You'll be a dead Christian if you 
pick up the wrong person. Amen. So just be in the spirit. Be cautious. You know why? Because we live in perilous times. And the scripture says in the last days, perilous times shall come because men shall be lovers of their own selves. Amen. Lovers of their own selves. So look what it says here. So, so Jezebel sent the load to, to, um, to Elijah. Now, Elijah, isn't it funny that right after Elijah got this great victory on Mount Carmel, proved that God was the God that answered by fire? Just isn't it crazy when you go through a lot of victory, when you get win the battle, you win the war, God gives you the victory. I said, God gives you the victory and you are winning. Hallelujah. And then here come the devil. Here come the devil. Here come the threat. Here comes the spirit of Jezebel threatening you to tear down you and to tear down what God has built in your life. Amen. So we're going to take this break and we'll be right back right after this. Welcome back to the broadcast. Amen. I know that you got an important message here. So let's get back to this teaching. We're in 1 Kings uh, chapter 19. And so uh, I was saying that, isn't it ironic how when you get victory, you just broke through, just got a breakthrough. Just God just delivered you, uh, delivered you financially, brought you out of the pit of depression, brought you out of the pit of sin, brought you out of all of these different situations that you're in. But it seems like now there's another situation that pops up because of your victory. You know, people are jealous of your victory. People hear about your victory. Amen. But and then sometimes when God uh, gives you the victory over your enemies, your enemies get madder. So here's the spirit. Uh, here's the first uh, account of Jezebel getting mad. Amen. And Jezebel, anybody that knows who Jezebel was, she was the wife of Ahab, the, the king, I believe, of Israel. She was the wife of the king of Israel, and, but she ran him. She ran the country. She ran everything. She ran him. Amen. So he was, I guess, handpicked. So she ran him, and this is what's happening today. Uh, the house is out of order because the women want to run the house. Now, a virtuous woman makes her home. Uh, but the man, this is the, he's the king of this house. He's the king. He's the leader of this family. Amen. And so God blesses from the head down. But now when you have conflict where the woman is in control or she wants to be the head, amen, she fights for that place and for that place of authority, then what does it do? The Bible says a house divided against itself will not stand. It cannot stand. So there's an order. God has an order. It's God first, and then the angels, and then man, and then woman, and then the family, then the children, amen, then the animals, then the, then the things of the world that are subject to man's domination, amen. So look what it says here in the 19th chapter, amen, which I already read to you before. It says, and Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw it, he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongeth unto Judah, that is left, 
and left his servant there. So Elijah ran, and then the next thing says he hid in a cave. Now, the Lord said to me, when he talks about hiding in a cave, that's the spirit of depression. When you go and put yourself in a, in a cave, you go get depressed, and you go and start uh, feeling hopeless and helpless because of a threat. Because somebody's threatening you, because the courts threaten you, because people threaten to sue you, because people threaten to come after you. Amen. The Bible says that a thousand will fall at thy, thy right hand, uh, a thousand will fall at thy side, uh, at thy right hand, and ten thousand at thy side, but it shall not come nigh thee. Amen. Isn't that what the scripture says? And the Bible says he give his angels charge over you to bear you up in all your ways. So don't walk in the spirit of fear. So here he runs. He goes in the spirit of fear. He goes in the cave. But then God, uh, God gets a hold. God goes there to encourage him. Tell him, come out that cave. Come out of depression. Stop sitting around feeling bad about your situation. Come out of all of that. Amen. And so then in 2 Kings uh, chapter 9. Uh, we're going to go to 2 Kings chapter 9. We're going to pick up uh, what happens uh, to Jezebel. Amen. Or that spirit of Jezebel. Spirit of Jezebel trying to take over the church. You got, you got, uh, uh, and I, I don't knock any woman pastor because I know some really good women pastors. Amen. But when you have women pastors that usurp authority over the men, amen, uh, I don't even know what to say about that because I know some good women that are pastors. Amen. But, uh, but uh, a lot of things uh, cannot, might not be right in some places. Okay. But I'm not putting down women pastors. I love women pastors. I know women pastors. And they're doing a great job with their ministries. Okay. So look at uh, 2 Kings chapter 30. And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it. Okay, so now Jezebel has caused all these problems, but she hears about Jehu coming to uh, Jezreel, and Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her face. Why did she paint her face? Why did they paint their face? For attraction, for sexual attraction. It's something about women putting a lot of makeup on and stuff like that. It's very attractive to the face. It's very sensual, and it's attractive. So the Bible says she painted her face, and what else did they do? Amen. She painted her face and attired her head and looked out through a window. And as Jehu entered in at the gate, he said, Had Zemri peace, who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who's on my side? And there looked out at him two or three eunuchs. What was on his side? Eunuchs. That's almost what you have to be today to fight the spirit of Jezebel, of, of trying to be run and take over. You know, that's why Paul said, I would that you abide even as I. Amen. Because it's better, amen, to be single and serve God. Amen. In some instances, unless you have a woman of God that's got your back, she's praying with you. She's with you with the church. Amen. She's, 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 she understands ministry. Amen. She understands that she is there to support that man or that man is there to support that woman. Amen. Whoever's the pastor, the mate should be there supporting them, not being in their way, not trying to change who they are, but, you know, support who God has called them to be. But when you start fighting against what God has called a man or a woman to be, that is the spirit of Jezebel. I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry, but it's the spirit of Jezebel. Because God called the woman to come and be the helpmeet to the man, not turn him into her mini me. <laughs> okay, so look what it says here. And so, so the Bible says, and uh, and, and the scripture says, and, uh, and 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 as Jehu entered in at the gate, he said, Zamri peace. Who slew his master? And he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who's on my side? Who? And there looked out at him two or three eunuchs. Okay. And he said, throw her down. So that they threw her down. And some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses. And she trod and he trod under her underfoot. And when he was come in, he did eat and drink and said, go see now this cursed woman. And bury her. 
for she's, she is a king's daughter. And they went to bury her, but they found no more of her than her skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Amen. Wherefore they came again and told him and said, This is the word of the Lord, which he spake by his servant Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the portion of Jezreel shall dogs eat the flesh of Jezebel. Uh, and, and the carcass of Jezebel shall be as refuge upon the face of the, of the field in the portion of Jezreel, so that they, say, they shall not say, this is Jezebel. Amen? So, uh, and then after Jezebel, after Jezebel was judged for her wickedness, then Ahab, her husband, who let her be wicked, he was judged. Okay, so when God's calling you to stand up, you know, and, and I say, I pray all the time. I said, Lord, don't let me have the spirit of Eli. Because you know what happened to Eli? Eli had folks running crazy in the church, running wild in the church. So what happened was God came to him and said, if you don't get your two sons, they was fornicating, getting high, running the women, uh, messing with the money, the communion, doing all kind of crazy stuff in the church. And Eli, the priest, God came to him and said, if you don't get your sons in order, if you don't get your house in order, I'm going to kill them and you. Okay? So we have a lot of Eli's, Eli's that are in the pulpit that are allowing their kids to run wild and be crazy. Amen? Uh, in my closing, my daughter said to me the other day, she said, you know, Dad, you should just let me go to parties, just do whatever I want to do. I said, not here, not here. Because the Bible says train them up in the way they should go. And when they get old, they will not depart. Okay, we'll finish this on the next uh, television broadcast, okay? Well, we love you. God bless you. Don't forget, sow that seed. Go to your cash app and cash up us that $100 offering now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And let us build this year and continue to reach many souls through the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is Bishop Ernest Johnson. On behalf of all the saints, partners, and friends, we say to you, no matter what your problems are, Jesus is the answer. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.